I see trees? Oh, please tell me we're out of that gosh-awful town! Creature has thighs like this. Maybe I should get its phone number. Fucking mind games. Paula, keep treading water, baby! to that gate.
Put these hell monkeys in cages. We need darkness if we are going to shoot at that switch. Well, maybe those hell monkeys in cages could give us a hand. Uh, leg. Uh, whatever. like more of those giant demons. And here comes the kicker. Well, would you look at that? The darkness really did a number on that brute. Magnifico. Boy, for a second there, I thought we were... Ew, gross! Are those demons crawling out of his... Hmm, not cool.
More cages. I wonder. Me, Angel. Yes, G, it's you, but is that her? Who wears garters into a swamp? Pete, y'all take care now. You don't come through the swamp. That is some gooey shit, ain't it? But your girl has gone mental. She's always been crazy. That is why I love her. But she never gets mad at you. Oh, she gets mad. One morning, after a bout of passionate lovemaking, she was making us coffee just to get a reaction. I told her I was married. You were being funny? Yeah. A practical joke, you know? Chicks love those. Paula was so angry, she grabbed a knife and chased me all over the apartment. And she is scary with a knife.
Pescados locos have taken a shine to us. Stay in the light. We can't see their eyes if they're wearing a mask.
Why do I feel like I'm in a movie? What, were you raised in a barn? Good to know we have the same tastes. Stop them! Híjole! Legend of the Stinky Crow. Call, call. For nearly 14 years, his mind had been soaring miles above. But Elliot Thomas was still stuck down on Earth in the boring town of Sinchester. Sinchester. Sinster. What? It's pronounced Sinster. How do you know? My cousin's from Sinster. Don't, never mind. Keep going. <sighs> Alone in his treehouse, he glued feathers to his wing suit, readying himself for the day he would join the Phoenixes and Quetzalcoatls in the sky. Dinner time, cried his mother from their house across the yard. Elliot sat at the center of the table. A TV dinner was challenge is B.O. as the dominant smell in the room. <laughs> On his left, his mother yammered about her day at the ER. On his right, his father was absorbed in his smartphone. As for Elliot, his eyes were fixed on the ceiling fan. The most fascinating personality within a ten-foot radius. In home room the next day, Justin Schmakowski threw a crappy paper airplane at him. Within seconds, Elliot had built a superior vessel. He stood up on his chair and swiftly launched the Papier Flieger. What? At his unsuspecting enemy. Go, Papier Flieger, go! Zoom, splort, splort. The marvel of paper aviation lodged itself in Justin's tender eyeball. <laughs> Mr. Thomas bellowed their teacher. Go to the principal's office. Later that day, Elliot was cooing quietly to himself as he bought a candy bar in the lobby. Casey Wichtitz was smoking nearby and sneered at him. You'll never fly, stinky crow, she laughed. Why don't you go jack off to some bird porn? <laughs> I bet you do more fapping than flapping. Hey, that's pretty good. Fuck you, screeched Elliot as he ran for the door. It was dark out by the time Elliot meandered home. 
On the sidewalk, he passed a gaunt man who stared at him intently, desperately even. Uh-oh, stranger danger. The man opened his mouth and said, Uviwa, Uviza. What the fuck? Elliot had planned to eat his candy bar tonight while he finished his masterpiece. But he instead held it out to the man. I know what you mean, he replied. The schoolyard was packed the next morning as Elliot's classmates waited for first bell. Go, go! As one, the students turned toward the gate and saw Elliot dressed head to toe in his wingsuit. After a moment of shock, they burst into laughter. But they were already far below him. He swooped through their midst and into the school. Call, call! He bounded through the halls, zigzagged up the stairwell. Gah! The school let out a collective gasp when they saw a stinky crow on the roof. With a triumph, Vant snap. He spread his wings, and a moment later, he had leapt. The next two seconds were the most beautiful of Elliot's entire life. He could feel their eyes upon him. He was flying, and their awe was keeping him aloft. Ten minutes later, as guidance counselors wiped bits of Elliot off sobbing students, and the police struggled to piece together the story you are reading now. Elliot's teacher looked down at the wreckage of the boy on the pavement and never forgot what he saw. One bloody hand had formed a peace sign. The other was giving him the finger. It's like an Alanis Morissette song. The end. Okay, lovely. I don't think I'll sleep for weeks. <laughs> Get that, cojones.